made it all the way here, you creeping little maggots? Have you wriggled up to bow to me? Has Lohar sent you to beg forgiveness for his sins? My lord had faith. He came to me when Lohar failed the queen. And as a reward for my service, he has granted me his favor. He has granted me Mord Akhaim. You will learn nothing! My lord has granted me power. I will never answer to another. You might not bow to me in this life, but maybe you'll bow to him in the next. The master sorcerer throws up his pocked, cracked arms to defend himself as you step forward. The undead dwarf looks quickly over its shoulder, his gaze darting from shadow to shadow. Of course, of course, anything, just name it. What? Source? I... The skeleton slowly lowers his arms, staring at you in disbelief. Of course. You're God-woken. You seek power. Ultimate power. <laughs> and I'm worried we could not find common ground. Yes, God-woken, I can teach you. If you swear, you won't banish me to the afterlife. 
Am I not? How many others have survived the Magister's witch hunt? The skull before you curls into a maggot-eating grin. No, you need me. So I teach you and you spare me. Do we have an accord? Praise be. Very well, Godwoken. Listen carefully. Source and void, day and night, love and hate. One is meaningless without the other. To grow your source, to achieve your potential, you must embrace the void. The grinning skeleton reaches into the folds of his robes and pulls out a small black mass. It's covered in veins and oozing pus. Here, Godwoken. Take a bite. The finest meal you'll find in this cave. The heart of a void woken. Your god stirs, pushing you to eat it. Do not fear, a voice whispers. Do what must be done. Perhaps not the most appetizing thing around, but if you truly want to channel more source... The skeleton extends his arm, jiggling the heart towards you. A glob of dark yellow pus oozes through the bones of his palm and drips to the ground. The thick pus explodes into your mouth, coating the back of your throat. You can feel it running down your throat like rancid custard. You start to retch, your body struggling to reject this intruder, but your teeth clamp down hard on the fibrous, gritty flesh as you force yourself to chew and swallow. Deep within you, you feel something change. Your soul opens up, and you feel it swell as new channels for source start to flow through you. You swallow all you can, and despite the meat in your stomach, you feel a new space inside you, a potential waiting to be filled. There, I held up my end of the bargain. I did as you asked, and now I'm getting as far from this cave as my bones will take me. Mordus looks at you in alarm. God's graves, please be quick. He, he wanted the death fog destroyed. Once he knew his rats had found it in the Peacemaker's wreck, he wanted it destroyd. The greatest weapon Rivalod has ever seen lands in his lap, and he ordered the barrels thrown into the ocean. We couldn't let it happen. We needed it. So I... I took control. The power gifted to me, the power of Morda came, the power to bend the feeble-minded to my will, and so much more. It was a gift from... It was a gift. Ah! The Queen! It's the Queen! She saw what Death Fog did to the Black Ring! She saw it destroy the Elven Forest! She said the dwarves needed power like that. And he told me to make sure she got it. He told me to ensure they got to... <laughs> arcs. The barrels were going to arcs. I... I can't! He'll hear! He'll know! He'll find me! He'll come! If I tell you, I die. Or... or worse. Mordus takes a step back, looking about in half-crazed panic. I can't. I... I can't! Not now. It's too late. It's all too late. You grab the dwarf's old, brittle arm and follow through with your knee. There's a dry snapping sound as the crumbling bone cracks and gives way. Thank you, I'll tell you. You relent, and the dwarf stumbles back, cradling his fractured arm and whimpering. It's... It's him. The one the Seven rejected. The god. The dwarf is interrupted by another crack. You see his femur has developed a break. The fracture spreads, shearing the bone in two. Morda stumbles to the ground, oddly silent. He looks up, and you see that his jaw is cracked, broken, and falling to pieces. Fissures are starting to run across his skull, and his ribs start to snap and fall one by one. 
Mordus tries to raise his remaining arm to his head, splaying his fingers wide, but the digits are viciously snapped off by some unseen force. You hear the tiniest whimper from the skeleton before his face caves in, as if smashed with an invisible mace, and the body lies still and silent. I've never felt such power. You feel newfound oh. powers of the source course wildly through your body. Deep inside your soul, your god calls for you. It would be wise to meet with your god again by performing the Meister's ritual, here or in Siva's vault. The thought of death fog gives you pause. A weapon like that should give everyone pause. A weapon of untold destruction? And you use this against your own kind, knowing it ends their existence? How efficient. Who wakes up in the morning and thinks, today I'll invent something that'll be able to murder people by the hundreds? Ah, death fog. Instant victory. I always applauded Lucian for using it. I, I'm so sorry. I didn't want to hurt you. I, I didn't want to hurt anyone. But he made me. That voice. He made me. I let him out of the vault. I killed anyone that got in the way. And then I sat here as he gibbered about needing to complete his bloody murder game. Damn divine. Some ancient ritual, he said. It gave him the power to twist our minds, to turn us into his puppets. And when he was strong enough, it turned him into... that. He thought it was a reward. Kept saying how blessed he was. What madness. The ghost stares down at his broken, twisted body, a look of glum resignation on his face. It ain't a pretty way to go. Mind you, could be a damn sight better than whatever Lohar would have done if he'd got his hands on us. Mind control or no, he'll be livid when he finds out what they... what we did. The ghost turns to you, her finger urgently pointing towards something unseen. Silent lips move, issuing an urgent, unheard plea. Your hands merge together, your world twisting. Looking down, you see you're holding a barrel marked with a fatal warning. Death fog. A cart contains many barrels more, recovered from a wrecked ship. The room is filled with voices, cracking jokes and swearing oaths as you go about unloading the cart. But somewhere, in the hum of voices, one cuts through the rest. Stop, it hisses. Do your duty. You lift up the death fog, and, fighting against every step, you walk back to the cart. You pass a dwarf, struggling against the voice and winning. But you crack his skull with a barrel in your hands. One by one, the barrels are loaded again, and the cart departs. As it trundles out of the cave, the voice returns. Come, come to me and you feel your feet carrying you into the cavern's darkness. paper. It looks important. The dwarf's royal seal? It couldn't be. Open it at once. This could be valuable.
Even dead, there are humans causing me trouble. You need something. Take a hike, long shanks. Me and your belly button ain't got nothing to talk about. What's it look like? Either there were a void woken attack, or this is the most unfortunate dinner party you ever did see. Now shove off. I've got an afterlife to enjoy, and your jabbering ain't making it easy. Walk on, heartbeat. I've got nothing to say to you. The dwarf pulls a dagger with shocking dexterity and reflexively swings at your gut. Thankfully, the ephemeral blade passes right through you. With a rancid look, the dwarf pockets the knife. As he does so, you see an elaborate seal on the handle. Through gritted teeth, the dwarf growls. We're done here. Don't worry about it, says Loha. Quietest work around, says Loha. Well, I don't see him here. Cold as the stone he's lying on. It will be fine, my ass. And here I was, the fool, believing him. The ghost swings a foot to kick its old body in frustration, but the boot sails straight through her corpse. Because it's his fault. If not for him, I'd still be sitting there, wine in hand, happy as Larry. But no, he knew best. He wanted the death fog destroyed. That's why we were to make sure it got into the right hands. Our hands! I even stood guard of Mordus when he was doing nothing but the Queen's bidding. No wonder we came to this. This is what I deserve for following the orders of a leader with the spine of a sponge. Thank Duna Her Majesty has more steel in her belly than that coward. You're a little tall to be asking questions like that. Her Majesty is trying to do what's best for the dwarf people. And there's not a thing more you need to know. The lock's melting away. Mordus turned the key into an amulet. Cunning. I thought this cave couldn't get any more grim. I do not want to know what that smell is. Death, most likely. Watch your step. Look out. I see a trap nearby. Spotted a trap.
Loha rubs his forehead beneath his hood and stares at the ground. As you approach, his face hardens and he stands at his full height. So? Loha takes the amulet and turns it over in his hand. He pockets it matter-of-factly. What did you find in the cave? Dead, more dead, and Mordus with them. I owe you. Whole realm owes you, really. But I'll do my best to settle that debt myself. Take this key. Necked it from the Whites. It opens a chest in the Magister Barracks, second floor. Be careful getting at it. If they spot you, it'll be lights out. Should be some good stuff in there, though. Real good. I guess there's no hiding it now. It's like this. I didn't sign up to move Death Fog. Other weapons, even soul-forged weapons, sure. But Death Fog? <laughs> Absolutely not. When we found the bomb on a Magister's ship, I was told to ship it to Arx along with the rest of the stuff. But I couldn't. I didn't want my people to have it any more than theirs. Nothing good can come of Death Fog. Nothing. Mordas disagreed, obviously. But thanks to you, he's dead. I'll go destroy the Death Fog bomb myself. Make sure no one can get their hands on it. Ever. In an instant, Lohar goes completely white. No! What have we done? Look, Mordas had to go one way or another. I thought... I thought I could kill two birds with one stone. So yell all you want. I was wrong and I know it. But every second you spend here telling me my sins is a second closer to that bomb going off. I'm gonna do what I can to stop the Queen. I suggest you try the same. Get to Arx. End this before Justinia does. That's a lot of blood. Paul, but Bubba's got his dossier on the sorcerers. What can I do for you? All I need to do is watch. I'm on a break now, Yvette. You better not fall asleep before watching it. I'm watching you, stranger. 
Magic Stakav has got all the information he needs locked up downstairs. So don't think you'll get a reward for peddling hearsay. Of course, sir. Right away. No more disappearances? No more deaths? It seems justice has been served well. So source weapons? What the hell are they doing there? Be sure to tell Raymond or Julian as soon as possible. <laughs> 